Hey there guys, how are you doing? Hope everybody survived the holidays. All of those crazy opening events are over the primals, the 2x sacreds during the event where you could get the owl. All of that craziness is over. I'm back to posting my normal raid videos instead of like shiny things popping up on the screen all out gambling slot machine we're back to just normal talking about raid stuff so welcome back welcome back to reality everybody it's all over the holidays we're back and i have finally done something i've been meaning to do for a long long time if you've been watching my videos you know i've mentioned this nothing short of a hundred times probably it just sort of always slips into conversation I finally leveled a decreased speed champ. I really, really wanted to get one of like the super duper cool ones, you know, like Nekmo Thar, like the Void Epic White Dryad Nia. She's so cool. I want her, but after like months and months of opening, nothing. So, and that's not to talk down on the champ I did level, but you know, it would be nice to have one of the epic cool ones. But the great thing is that I've already gotten a lot of use out of this champion, and it's a champion that you all either have or will have very shortly, absolutely guaranteed. It's Visix the Unbowed? 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 I'm not actually sure. She has no bow, but I don't know. She doesn't bow or something. I don't know. She's probably... Does she have lore? She has lore. Okay, that's a lot of words. We will check that later. Um, <laughs> but first, I want to just talk about her kit. I want to show you the her use, the way I'm using her. And then we'll come back, look at build, masteries, all that good stuff. Sound good? No one's here. It's just me, so I'll go with yes. That sounds good. Okay, I don't know why I clicked out. Good move by me. Okay, so talking about the kit. She is definitely useful in a lot of areas in the game. Where I'm at right now on my account, I s exclusively want her for this kind of Hydra usage, so I didn't really explore other areas yet. I don't need her there. This is just kind of a Hydra video, I guess. A1, attack two times, 80% uh, chance of decreasing the turn meter by 15% chance fills their turn meter equal to the amount the target loses. This is going to book up to 100%. So that is a really good ability in a lot of places, you know, Fire Knight, whatever. Anybody who actually has a turn meter that can be decreased, unlike the Hydra Heads. Of course, here's the ability we're after Sinister Allies. Uh, booking up to 100% chance to place decreased speed for two turns. We're also going to place Ally Protection on everyone except ourselves so we will protect them help them take less damage and then she's also got a provoke where she'll place a shield buff on herself equal to 20 percent of her max hp so i'm getting not just one but two hydrate usage out of her there's the decrease speed which of course is just probably the best hydra debuff because you want to slow down these heads you want to decrease the amount of turns they're taking. You want to slow down the digestion, digestion of your champions when they get eaten. This is so, so important. And the other one, Provoke. This is how we can deal with the Head of Decay, which is my personal least favorite head. It's the one that cleanses the allies and... Um, will also cleanse one head in particular and give them that big shield. And if the shield doesn't get removed and goes to the full duration, it's just a whole mess. So she can provoke him because he's the only head that can be provoked. So we're doing a lot here with a little kit that we got from login bonuses. And yes, I did go ahead, booked everything. Of course, I want that. And we'll come back to the gear and all that. I just want to show you how I've been using her. So we'll go in, I, we have Nightmare Unlocked. I haven't tried it. I'm on Brutal. 
We'll stick to Brutal for now. This is the team I used last week. That's fine by me. Okay, so we're going to come in, lead with Python. We'll get the HP burn on our tag. We weak hit here. It's okay. We'll survive, I'm sure. Weak hits for days. Okay, so here's what is important. We have all of these debuffs on, right? We have all of these debuffs on. And this is normally, we're almost to the part where if we didn't have any level of control, the Head of Decay would just come out here when he takes his turn, he would cleanse every single debuff off of every single one of the heads, ruin all of our hard work. And then this is the even worse part. This guy, the Poison Head, he will come in immediately after and he's going to place Poison Cloud buff because all of the debuffs would be removed, my block buffs would be gone. So they're all going to get Poison Cloud, which is an awful, awful buff. It means you'll weak hit on every single head unless they're under HP burn. And obviously I can't apply HP burn to them if I'm weak hitting them every time. So I'm just going to go ahead. Going to come out with the Provoke. Uh, I don't even know what I want here. Could do the buff, could do the other thing. So he used the Blinding Smog, the Poison Cloud ability, but it got put on only this head because we weak hit him with the block buffs earlier. You might get luckier than me. You might get, you know, the full sweep. You, um, but one head, we can handle it. That's completely fine. And then we also, you know, we delayed the removal of the debuffs, and now I can come in with, like, our talk and... Uh, you know, get some damage off with this before he does come in and cleanse them. So I don't have a secondary provoker, so it's not total control of this head. Usually people pair a provoker with like somebody else in a provoke set. That's like a common thing to do. So I don't have that here, but it is something else you can do, something to consider. And just anything to stop that poison cloud from going on, delay the heads a little longer. That's what we're looking for. And then, of course, eventually we'll start coming in here with the decreased speed. I will not come in with it now because he is about to cleanse all of us. But once everybody's cleansed, I can come back out, decrease speed, and sort of reset, go from there. There's the brief overview of how to use her in Hydra. We're gonna come back to the build now. And this is not the build. You don't have to build your Visix like this. You can build your Visix however you want, whatever you think is gonna work for your team. That's the cool and fun thing about Hydra. Everybody's using a different combination of champs. Everybody needs something different, wants to try different things. And that's the whole fun part of raid for me is not doing the same thing. So this is my build. And this is a set that I've wanted to try for a really long time. I really wanted to get somebody in a guardian set, which is the one that's like ally protect on a set. Uh, it's a four piece where absorbs 10% of all damage dealt to ally champions heals by 10% every turn to help compensate with the extra damage that you're taking every turn. I really wanted to get someone in this for a long time because it is, I mean, it's a, it's a really good set. It's popular for Hydra because you know, you're in Hydra and you've got like your supports and your damage dealers. And a lot of times those damage dealers are squishy. So this sort of guardian additional ally protect is really good. Anything you can do to s stop them getting smacked by wrath head, we want to do that. So I wanted to do it. Um, it's definitely not the ideal build. Like, uh, so I've got about 60k HP, 3,400 defense. I have 215 speed, which is a little slower than I think you should be for Brutal Hydra. I would say like pushing like 230 or something. 
And like I said, this is not the best build ever. That's kind of what I like to show on my channel. I like to show people that you can go in there with not the best champs, not the best builds, and you can do a bunch of things that you probably didn't think you can do. That's what I like to show. So honestly, the fact that this build is looking the way it's looking, like, I like that. <laughs> I'm happy with it. But this isn't the build I... I guess there were some things that I couldn't get... So, like, I could get another 20 speed out of here with glyphs because I did not glyph anything. But it's just, I I want to swap out a couple of the pieces. Speed glyphs are hard to find, so I'm not, you know, I didn't commit them yet. So I'll show you the pieces here. This one I did glyph because, yeah, that's, like, pretty god status item. We've got that. We've got that. We've got this one. This is definitely one that I'd really like to get a better piece because like crit rate, attack percent, not really doing anything for us. I really wish this would have been other stats. I need some more accuracy. Here's our chest. Again, you know, crit damage, crit rate, those are not the best stats ever. I went with HP boots. Obviously, I could easily go speed and get 45 more speed and have insane speed, but because I'm taking so much damage because of Guardian set, I wanted to go with the additional HP. And again, when you're building someone, you know, you do you and do what you need. If you need to do the speed builds, then absolutely go for it. Accessories, these are both five stars, so nothing crazy here. I've got Accuracy Banner. Again, didn't bother to glyph any of this stuff because this is not the gear I want. <laughs> this is not my perma gear, I don't think, for her. So I'm not committing any of that. She's doing great as it is. Um, yeah, so 215 speed. Did not go crazy resistance because I use buff tank. I have block buffs. So did not go for that. Accuracy 324. This was hard, I think. This was a challenging build for me to get the set I wanted and still get the accuracy I need and still be as tanky as I need. It's not perfect. And um, let's go over to the Masteries, because <laughs> the Masteries. As you can see, they're not done yet. I'm indecisive. They're not done on purpose. It's not like one of those things where I started the video and I'm like, oh no, I didn't do my Masteries. I'm thinking about it, because like I said, this isn't my perma gear for her, I don't think. I would like to upgrade a few of the pieces. And I haven't done the masteries because I'm not sure what I need, I guess. Because there definitely comes a point in the game where, you know, because like obviously coming down to Warmaster, that's, you know, usually you go here, you go, you go offense support, you get Warmaster, right? on most champions and that's definitely fine you can that's never really the wrong thing to do um so that would be a fine build but the thing is when you're getting kind of deeper in hydra and you're making your teams and you're figuring out what you need war master is like it's it's not really necessary i think because like I said, I'm not super happy with her accuracy. The resistance isn't the most amazing thing ever. When you're in Hydra and you start needing, um, oh no, no, we closed it. Okay, so when you're in Hydra and you start needing more of these stats, you know, you need 400 accuracy on Nightmare. You need 500 res on accuracy. Um, this Unshakable Res Plus 50 and this Eagle Eye, they're sort of the ones I'm eyeballing because it's Visic, she's a support. She's the War Master is not going to give her that much damage. So I will probably end up going with one of these two. That would be better for me. And again, you know your account and your builds and your champs and your Hydra team. So what you choose might be different than mine, but... Yeah, you start needing a lot of accuracy, you start needing a lot of resistance, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with coming down here and grabbing Eagle Eye if you need it, grabbing Unshakable if you need it. So I'm deciding between those two. I don't think it's going to be a Warmaster for me. And 
I mean, the other thing is too, the War Master damage is like so negligible. Like for example, here was one of the teams I used. Ugo has War Master. He did like 2.3 mil. He's also a support. He's in Relentless, so he's taking more turns than her. He's faster than her. And she did like 800k. So on a champion like Visix, it's not like you're really doing much with your War Master. So that's why I am personally leaning toward the other two. I'm sure I'll go with one of them. And then, yes, these were the final scores I had. I've tested her several times. These, This is a brutal run. This is a brutal run. I'm still experimenting with my team a lot. Like, you can see I used Rosalvarg here. You can see I used Ragesh here. What's the correlation between these two champs? They both place increased speed. So... That was my thought process. Roselvarg kind of annoys me because he's very, very squishy. So I guess I had this thought like, hey, what if I use the defense champion? Because Ragesh is a defense nuker, but he also has increased speed. So that was my amazing thought process. And you can also see I hadn't even run her through the Minotaur fully yet. So she's like level 24. She still came out here. She did the job. It's a 51 million score. We got 57 here. Is this the most amazing Hydra team ever? Are these the highest Brutal Hydra scores ever? No, they're definitely not. So many people have way better teams, but these are both easy, easy one keys. And I would say the runs are easy because sometimes I get over the key minimum and it was hard, but it was definitely easy, both of those. So she's helped me out a lot, put my mind at ease about doing these brutal runs, which is the current place that I'm at on my account. I also have just, I, I forgot to start recording at the beginning of the video. That's why I went into the game and showed you, but just to see a little more of the run, you know, you can see Wrath just smacked us here, my team. Even Razabarg, the squishy one, he took so much less damage because she's ally protecting. She's got the guardian set. It should be a huge hit, but it's really not. You can see all the ally protects popping up. And even though she only had 800k or whatever, I think it was like 850k, whatever the damage is, that's not what a champion like her or Ugo is for. They come out here and they support the damage dealers and enable them to do damage. And these guys wouldn't do a lot of damage without their supporting cast. So that's the entire thing of it. Just showing a little more of the run. You know, she saved him from another huge hit here. Almost died herself. Uh, <laughs> she did die, but that's why we have a reviver. And this keeps going until we reach all... You can see it's getting a little hairy here with every buff being stolen. Would not recommend that. But now we're nearing 50 mil. And I think this is the one that caps at 51 mil. You've got this, Hugo. He did not have it. So again, that was that turn... Uh, that run, sorry. I've definitely... I've got a lot of work to do on my Rosal and my team in general, but... They're out here doing it. Easy one key on Brutal. And like I said, my main use for her is Hydra. That's what I need her for. I'm not at the point where, you know, like I've done all the Doom Towers. I don't need wave content, but like absolutely she can full provoke a wave. That's awesome. She could be on like your Fire Knight team if you don't have anybody who can do the job better. Um, you know... She's a provoker and ally protector. Those champions are good in so many areas of the game if you need them to be. And that is all I have to say about her. But I'm definitely super happy that I leveled her. I also got Gwendolyn, who's another decree speed. And I'm really looking forward to using her. So hopefully a video on that soon. We'll see what kind of build I can come up with and where I can fitter in the team and how she's going to perform but you guys again hopefully y'all made it through the holidays hopefully it's all good now that we're all <laughs> back to reality and you guys enjoy the rest of your week and take care of yourselves thank you for hanging out with me goodbye